Amy Fashion Tappings here, and I don't know if you remember my little tiny petite sweater I got at the thrift store. It's made out of Angora. It's so soft. It's so tiny, it doesn't even match my shoulders. So I bought this with the intent that I love the fabric. Oh, I just absolutely love the fabric. I'm going to make this into a little bit dressier. You know, I showed you how to make beanies out of a sweater before, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with this sweater. So this is what we're going to start off with front of the sweater and the only thing we're going to need for a template is your largest dinner plate. This is the largest dinner plate I have. It's actually, I'm going to give you the dimensions, it's actually 11 inches in diameter and that's a little small for what I need but it's a good template for, for us to use. I'm kind of hoping to have at least 14 inches uh, in diameter but this sweater is kind of small. So. Since it is small, I'm actually going to work on the back of the sweater. Making sure I have a nice little cuff at the bottom. It's a little band at the bottom. I don't want to cut into that because I'm going to use that for what goes around the head, the band of the hat. So I'm, I'm going to lay my plate down, centered, so that I have enough gap below and above because I want to make, I want to make this bigger than the plate. So I'm just going to cut Start off, I'm going to cut my band off my bottom because I want to save that. Okay. I cut the band off the bottom because that's what we're going to use for the band on here. Actually, this would be an adorable headband. Well, I have to go pick up another sweater. Okay, so I'm not cutting through the front of the sweater. I'm only cutting uh, around the, the back of the sweater because I could use the front of the sweater for something else. So I'm going to go wide around my plate. This is just as a template. We can make sure it's more even after we're done. If you're more comfortable with tracing a circle around, then go ahead and do that. The Angora, since it, this Angora specifically, oh, there's shoulder pads in there, whoops. Um, since the Angora is so hairy, it doesn't take to the chalk very well. Okay, so I have my big circle. Let's move the scraps out of the way because we're going to do something neat with the sleeves too. I'll show you that after we're done with the hat. So it's kind of an awkward circle, so I just, I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to fold it in half again. And that's how we can trim our circle to make sure it's a perfectly round circle. This, this is how we make it a lot neater, is by doing this. That means all the sides will be the same size. So now I have my big circle. Now my circle ended up being, since I eyeballed it, in case you want to be more precise, and, and you, if you're using a large sweater, you want to be more precise. My circle is 15 inches by 15 inches. So I said I wanted at least 14, so 15 turned out to be perfect. Now, we need to measure the distance around our head. Recognize this jacket from my last thrift haul, my little quilted satin jacket. Now let's measure, oops, I got my sunglasses on, so. Measure around our head, and I am 22 inches. Yeah, I'm 22 inches, and so I want to make it an inch, uh, about an inch less, because um, I want it to fit nice and snug. So I find a seam of my sweater, cut it open, so it's one long strip now. And I'm going to measure out 21 inches because 22 is what my head is, but I want it to be a little snug. Okay. 21 inches. Cut. I can actually use this for something too. Okay, so I have my band for my head and I have my top for my hat. Now it's easy. 
What I'm going to do is take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to put a basting stitch all around the outside borders of this hat so that we can shrink down the edges. So we're just going to put a basting stitch all the way around. Now, since we are working with sweaters, you know sweaters will fray. So you can do a zigzag stitch all around your edges to keep it from fraying, or you can get a bottle of fray check and put a dab of fray check all the way around. It's a liquid and it'll keep your sweaters from fraying, but you have to do something, otherwise your hat won't last very long. So I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch and um, a zigzag stitch all the way around just to make it sure it doesn't fray, and then I'm gonna do a basting stitch all the way around because we're going to pull the string and gather it all together. So let's go do that now. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is do a zigzag stitch all around our edges to keep it from fraying. Okay, and fix it. Okay, I'm back where I started from. Lock in my stitch. Okay. Kind of gives it a nice little lettuce leaf edge. So now I'm going to switch it to a basting stitch. And I'm going to put a basting stitch just about half inch from the edge. And just do one simple basting stitch all the way around. You do not have to lock in your stitch when you do the basting stitch because we're going to be pulling it. Yep. Set that to the side real quick. Next, for our headband, all we need to do is connect right sides together. And you can tell what the right side is based on the seam, where your seam's at. You can tell what's right side and what's wrong side. So right sides together, all you're going to do is attach the two together. And I use a zigzag stitch for that. Lock in my stitch, and then lock in, lock, lock in your stitch at the end with a back stitch or a fixed button. Matters what your sewing machine has. Okay, now you're going to pull on one of your your basing stitch threads that's sticking out. You're going to pull. and gather the material because we're going to we need to shrink down the hole of this circle we need to shrink it down to be the same size as our headband okay now I've got it nice and, t uh, nice and scrunchy, the size of my band, and now it's time to pin my band into place. Okay, this is my good edge. This edge has not been cut, so it's already not going to fray. This is the side I did cut. This is the side that I'm going to sew to my hat. So right sides together, I'm going to slip it right over, right sides together, I'm going to slip it over the what I just did the basing stitch on and I'm going to pin it on so both of our rough edges are up here and that's what we're going to be sewing on so pin all the way around the hat evenly now this is what I've got my beanie I've got my rough edges down here this is my finished edge up here I have it folded up so right sides are together so the right sides are in here I'm just going to stitch right along the bottom of this fold. And I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. A lot of material to go through. Okay. Okay, I'm at the end. Back stitch or your fix button. Remove all your pins. I, usually I put, remove my pins early as I'm going over them, but since this fabric is so thick, this Angora is very dense. 
I did not want to take the pins out and have anything shift and me not be able to tell that it's shift, shifted. So I took the risk if I had to replace the needle or not. Oh, look at this so far. And voila, you have a cute little hat with a little trim on it. And I'm going to go try it on and see how, how it fits. And then we'll move on to the second half of this project. But here's the hat. But I, I absolutely love this. What do you think? Ah, this is so much fun. And it's a little bit dressier than just doing the regular beanie, you know, like I did before with the other sweater. That's more comfy. This is more, I think, dressed up. So I'm going to go ahead and use the rest of that sweater for another project. Let's get started. So what are we going to do with these sleeves? I know. I'm going to cut these sleeves off. I'm not making leg warmers this time. What I'm going to make is the little handless gloves. So I made it a little longer. So you want to put the sleeve on. It's got to take my jewelry off. Okay. I guess I better take the jacket off too. Okay. All I have to do is put the sleeve on, see how it's going to fit. Sitting on my table. Hopefully it holds me. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Have this thing collapse. It's just a bouncy cardboard cardboard table. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I'm going to put a hem at the bottom here. Or if your sweater is a larger sweater, take a thin piece of elastic and just sew it into the top of the armband. I don't have to do this because this sweater was so tiny in the first place. A simple hem is going to stay in place. So, now what I need to do is I need to mark, I want it to come out far enough to where I can still use my phone, but I want to be able to keep my hands warm. So I got to figure out where I want my thumb to come out, and I'm going to cut on the seam. So I think I want my thumb to come out without cutting my thumb off. Okay, I want my thumb to come out right there. So I'm going to just make a little... Little tiny cut. How easy, how easy was this? It's in the seam. So all I need to do is just put a little fray check here around the thumb. See, I just made it big enough for my thumb to get through. Just put a little fray check, liquid fray check right there so it won't fray. And look what you have now. Cute little arms to go with your cute little hat. Now, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and make this a little bit smaller. Be right back. So now what I want to do is I want to make it a little bit thinner. Now I don't need to do the elastic. I don't need to do the elastic because I don't really need it to be that tight. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do a zigzag stitch around the top to keep it from fraying. That'll be easy because it's such a small area. Okay, always start on a seam so it hides your back stitch or your fix matters which one you're doing. So I'm going to hit fix or back stitch and I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch all along my edge with matching thread. I got that angora hair up my nose. Oh my god. From cutting. Okay. Okay, I'll keep going. The only place you need to zigzag is where you've cut. And the thumb hole, we're using fray checks. So that's no big deal. Fix it. Okay, trim off our strings. Okay, now. Now, I want to make it a little thinner at the top. Because this part right here is too wide. That's easy. I'm just going to sew the seam up straighter. So I'm going to, right where it starts, see how it's nice and thin here and it starts to get wide here. I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to do a straight stitch. Kind of, it takes off that corner, makes it more narrow. So I'm going to start right about where it's widening out. And I'm going to use a straight stitch because I don't think anybody will notice I'm not going to cut any fabric off and I don't have to worry about um, any fraying. Fix my stitch, and I'm just going straight up so it's a nice straight line from the 
wrist all the way up. Back stitch or fix. And let's see how this turned out. I've never made these before. This is a first. And it's more snug up here. How cute is that? Matching set. I love it. So if they're done, what do you think? I love them. So where are the rings? Have your rings out. Show off your fingernail polish. Still use your iPad, your iPhone. How cute is this? Now this is an easy holiday gift for you to give someone as well because you go to the thrift store, I always come across Angor sweaters at the thrift store or any nice, it, it, it needs to be a material that's still in good condition. Not one that's got a really wide open weave because they'll fall apart. Make sure it's a nice tight weave, a pretty pattern, and you can make these. You can get them at the, the, uh, the thrift store for a buck to four dollars for a decent sweater. And you can make these, and I mean, your daughter, your friends, your mom, who wouldn't love to have fingerless gloves to use their phone and a nice, I think, a classy little hat that you can wear that's a little bit more dressy than just the standard beanie. So well, I hope you like this idea. This is Amy with Fashion Toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.